name of the team, and where the team's from, and the car, and year and model, and all this on Expo logo things. Of course, I put square placard for each car. If you don't want to put your car inside, we we have there'll be a place outside of the uh, inside the outer fence of Expo, but outside of that area for service vehicles and so forth, auxiliary vehicles. We can park the cars out there if you have to leave right away or can't can't leave it there for most of the day. They've asked us not to let people take their cars out before 10 o'clock, but we, if you have have to catch a 6 o'clock flight and don't have any other way to get there, we can make a couple of exceptions, but they, they're real concerned about, but they want to get things set up and leave them that way. You can lock your luggage in the cars. We'll have people there. Expo will have people there watching the cars. So you can come and go and get things from it during the day, but the car should stay there. Um, we figure to have a van there meeting us that can shuttle people back and forth to the hotel during the day if you really wanted it to go back to the hotel after lunch or whatnot. Um, the luncheon schedule is there. The Canadian Club is going to open at 10, 11.30 for drinks, 12.30 for uh, lunch. It's a buffet lunch, um, barbecue, salmon, and so on and so forth. The drinks are all free. The Canadian Club is sponsored by Canadian Club Whiskies. So the bar, the bar is an open bar. But they probably won't um, let you in the that's, bar That's why it's $25 a ticket. Um, the, uh, and we'll do the awards after that, about 1.30. Okay. Okay. Now, if you're, if you're conscious of your sponsors and so forth and want to be there to explain anything about your vehicle, the biggest crowd at the uh, at the Kodak Bowl will be about 3 o'clock. The, the RCMP do their mounted ride about then. Um, and they draw a crowd of six to 10,000 people usually. Um, so that's why we're having the, the the awards thing a little bit early to let people get get free in time for that. The Canadian Club also has a private monorail stop. No waiting. The line's right outside the, uh, there's a sort of a door and a platform right outside the restaurant. So you can leave, uh, you can't get off from that monorail stop, but you can leave from that stop afterwards and go any place. Usually the monorail lines are pretty long at Expo. Usually it also doesn't work about two days out of six, so don't be surprised <laughs> if it's not running. Um, the, uh, we'll have one person from Uniroyal there, Dick Bauer from Uniroyal, who's, who reps for them. He does the, does the PR and the press releases and so forth for them. It's fine. It's coming in tonight. Um, so we'd like everybody, um, we've gone, Wayne's gone around and put decal, extra decals into your windshield wipers or whatnot if yours are torn up. And we'd like the cars to get all pretty in terms of having the decals on and so forth before the finish, before they go on display there. Um, the question, Gene. Oh, okay. the um, the Canadian Club is a nice place. It, it's upstairs. It, it's it's in the middle of the expo area, opposite the main amphitheater. On the the amphitheater is on the river. This is back sets back from the uh, amphitheater. It's in the BC Pavilion, which is going to be one of the permanent structures there. And it's upstairs. There'll be a doorman with a list of of who to let in. And you walk up the stairs and turn left into the uh, the bar and lounge area. <laughs> That's easier. Oh, <laughs> I got tired holding it. Um, the, uh, anyway, it's a nice place, and it's nice to let them to let us in. That club's usually reserved for uh, corporate sponsors of Expo um, and for counselors general of the different exhibits and so forth. Yep. Same place. Same place. Yeah, they, Cutting back on the budget this year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they figured I, I wasn't worth it after we just tried to destroy the Audi. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really, I had a, it's 41 this year, but. They were all skeptical last year. Jerry was skeptical, apparently, when Tom said it was my birthday. He said, ah, I bet he's just pulling my leg. <laughs> but, um, no, it was really. It's going to sound sort of corny, but I, it was really a highlight for me. I think I'll remember it. I, um, yeah, it came to sort of corny. last year. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, yeah. <laughs> 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 I hope so. Okay, we 
We had some specific answers in mind for the trivia questions, but uh, some of the, many of the responses we got were better than ours. So Yvette's going to read all of the selected answers, most many of them. Here, hold this microphone. Yvette's uh, in charge. And we won't tell you what you want. We won't tell you what you want. We have a couple of trivia answers for you. Starting with the first question. If old lawyers never die, they just lose their appeal. And if old truckers never die, they get a new Peterbilt, then what do old rallyists do? And among the answers were, they just run out of gas. They get time-wise. They lose their regularity. speed they start a new stage and they just go in stages oh. did we leave anybody out that has one to add because yeah, we forgot. didn't get answers from one. everyone i didn't turn mine in what's yours, what's yours uh, I'll go, old, old drivers always come on time and old drivers always want to leave early <laughs> Well, there was no correct answer. <laughs> you all of them up. Okay, there is no. Now there is a correct answer to this one. But I'll give you an idea of what what some of the suggestions were. The question is, who do you call for auto repair in Dawson City? The minister. One of the answers was the mayor. Unless you're Gerald, then you call his daughter. That was my answer. <laughs> The Anglican deacon who eventually found Ernie, Robert Service, then pray to the preacher. Alvin, clergyman, the local priest or minister, preferably Episcopalian, and the last and probably the most touching answer, Al Schmidt. <laughs> was the minister. Jerry, do you want to explain why for the people that don't know? No. You mean no. <laughs> Come on, Jerry, explain. Is Maytag here? You should explain. Maytag should explain yeah. that. Where's Maytag? Where's Maytag? Where is he? He's sleeping. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I wasn't here last year, but from what I heard, Maytag had quite a problem with his car, no way to fix it. And he repeated a, a saying his old grandmother had told him that whenever you have a problem and you don't know how to fix it, you go and talk to the minister. And so that's what he did. And the minister found him a great mechanic. Okay. If White Horse is a one-horse town, how many chickens and chicken? We got several answers. Zero. Thirty-seven. <laughs> Zero because they're all lost. I want Satch's answer. He didn't didn't write it down, but I know what it is. Well, Tell we us. Not, we didn't understand the reference to chicken, except the oldest uh, legend in Alaska about chicken is that it really wasn't to be named chicken, so there yes. would be zero, zero, zero chickens and chicken. It was really to be named ptarmigan, but nobody in town knew how to spell it. <laughs> so they called it chicken instead because they could handle that. Right. Well, the correct answer was three and one rooster. Because if you drove in the chicken, there were actually little chickens painted up there. There were three chickens and one rooster. Why would anybody drive into chicken? To find out how many chickens there were. Okay, here's the next, the next question. What popular song from the late 60s or early 70s best describes Rocky II? We got this one. Okay, Davy Crockett, King of the Last Frontier, On the Road Again, Easy Rider, Good Old Rock and Roll, Wipeout, I Am a Rock, Roll Over Beethoven, and the most popular answer was Slip Sliding Away. Terry has... Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. Watch, watch me in the corner. 
Thanks, Tom. Okay, question number five. What costs five dollars in Fort St. John? That's the maid that came from 321. The answers are, possible answers are, some of the answers turned in are, breakfast buffet, one Heineken, a shot of the moon, and what we all thought the correct answer was Grimshaw's head. <laughs> what? Hold it. <laughs> what do you exchange in Ida's Cafe? You had to have been there probably to know the answer, but here are some possibilities. Fur pelts, gold, stories, partners and knickers, American money, not American money at par. <laughs> and the correct answer, I believe Satch would love to tell you the correct answer to that. Well, actually, there were two. You have to, you have to stand up and give the absolute correct answer. Well, um, From the beginning. Stand up. Well, stand actually, up. Actually, my answer had, had nothing to do with the real true correct answer. My answer was that you trade the entire B.F. Goodrich rally budget for a few rounds of after-hours drinks because that's... Well, we did once we persuaded uh, Widebody Klein the first year to ring the bell in Ida's Cafe. <laughs> but the true answer came from Tom Grimshaw uh, on, on what you do when you change rally teams, what the, what the teams do day by day. So, so Tom, tell them what day this is. you can take it. Today, today's the team changes underwear. You change with him, you change with him. <laughs> So one question was, what rally equipment was displayed in the BC Ferry Bar? I know the answer to that. I know the answer to that. We never that. One, we one, didn't know one that. White one of the rear suspension. <laughs> <laughs> White body's rear suspension. That was almost what you said last night. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. No, you, no, you said it better last night. Oh, yeah, I was drunk last night. At any rate, for those of you who don't know, one of them was, uh, I don't know about 84, but I'll bet Richards will be there this year. <laughs> Richard Hughes. What? <laughs> he's, he's looking oblivious. John. This person on the said, I don't know about 1984, but I'll bet Richards will be there to show us in. I didn't write that. The true answer was Bob Klein's posterior, complete with an 80-year-old grandmother taking photographs. It wasn't just Bob Klein, though. He did it with uh, that oh, that's right. he did it with somebody else in uh, one of the Shiners from Texas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it was a double right. one. It was a double one. But, I mean, Bob Klein by himself is a double one. What are the eight ball rules at the El Dorado Hotel in Dawson City? Oh, I know those personally. Grandchild, would you care to explain? Yeah, you don't play with the local girls. <laughs> You don't play pool with him, or you just don't Not play with him? <laughs> well, the the answer I heard in Milton, I don't see around. Where's Milt? Milt, explain. He just did. Well, tell the rest of the people why you don't play pool with the local girls. Because they change the rules. They keep the local boys in and make up right. rules as you go. <laughs> they make them up as they go, and they're all written on the wall. <laughs> you can't argue. <laughs> did you all hear that one? Yeah. yeah. What sign is in the outhouse at the top of the world TDS start, or TSD start? Flying Tigers. Colleen, will you please tell us what's in the outhouse at Chicken? Yeah. Um, in the Chicken outhouse. This is the scoty little, dirty, smelly, older than the hills outhouse. How scoty, dirty, smelly, it's so awesome. it All that stuff. <laughs> and, and there's a little sign on the back wall that says, that's if you fun, sprinkle yeah. when you tinkle, be a sweetie and clean the CD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we got, got some one. good ones. There's some of them we can't tell. No, tell it hey, that way, that's 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 that way. We stopped at the, <laughs> the, on the, the whole <laughs> 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 and the
Cassier Highway where you turn left there in the Chevron station and it's about eight or nine o'clock in the morning. That's the greatest shit house well I've seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right over it. Yeah, some of them we can't tell. We can tell the diaper one, but some of them are oh, 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 right. well, I don't John remember one. one. So you yeah, the John Wayne one. Tell the John Wayne one. Well, I forgot. Well, that's a good one. I can't one. remember it. Yeah. This, this toilet yeah. paper is John Wayne, like John Wayne. Rough and tough and don't take any shit off anyone. Listen to an asshole, I'd fart. <laughs> John, he was going, John was going to use it on you, Richard. <laughs> if I wanted to listen to an asshole, I'd fart. <laughs> They're learning about you, Richard. Okay, fourth on yesterday's was what is the largest bar in Beaver Creek? Ida's. Ida's Cafe. And for and for a bonus point. What is the smallest bar in Beaver Creek? I know. I know. Oh, it is. <laughs> the only bar. And, the only bar and your question for tomorrow, and control workers are not allowed to speak of this, and they are not allowed to enter. For a special for tomorrow, <laughs> how many control workers can you fit in half a revolving door? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
That Dodge may be rolling, but there's three grand to go. The mud's getting thicker, it started to snow. Mr. Sense to mind. Uh, Rodney is peevish, the cowgirl's in tears. But if we don't think above them, we'll be friends in ten years. Cancel that rally when the dawn light does go. And head for the desert and the racing we know. Now the party is over, poor Fricker's gone gray. And it's back to the Baja to do things our way.
might very well be Henderson. It's uh, it's sung to the tune of the old orange flute, which suspects <laughs> Irish origins, and she coughed on her cigarette right there. I think we have a guilty party right here. Or uh, Americans know the tune as Sweet Betsy from Pike. <laughs> In the state of Alaska, there's roads hard and muddy, and many's the driver's been on them, good buddy. They drive there with glee, and they drive there with smiles, till they're snared in the nightmare of Heinz Rubber Miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some are of arch gum, and some are of flubber, but everyone makes a strong man weep and blubber. No matter how clever, the wit and the wiles, there's not to be done against Heinz Rubber Miles. <laughs> Oh, some are by Goodrich and some Uniroyal, and some have been made from synthetic soil. The trick, they trick you, they trap you, seduce and beguile, for such is the lure of the Heinz rubber mile. <laughs> well, they stretch and they shrink and they're short and they're lazy. They'll drive your poor navigator kind of crazy. He has no computer, no notebook or files that help him to handle those Heinz rubber miles. <laughs> When I die, it's to heaven I'll go, I will know. Cause I've served so much time in this world down below. All the roads there are measured and paved with smooth tiles. It's the people in hell who get pines rubber. <laughs>
So do you.
nice thing about Richard Hughes is that he, he never loses his composure. He's always cheerful. And when he finally got together with the barmaid and he took off all his clothes in her room, she took one look and said, well, who do you expect to please with that? And he said, myself. How do you want to know the real story? take off his clothes, there was already somebody there taking her clothes off. Go on, go on. Oh, no, no, you're not telling anymore. You're not telling anymore. No, I thought that was enough. We're not, not going to tell on you, Richard. You still think about that, don't I don't know about that line about Richard's unit Second line. All right. Here's the town crier. This is, this is the Alcan 5000 Rally News, once again. Uh, this is on the inside passage, approximately... 20 knots. Who's passing? <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring your practice Richard? <laughs> or do you just look around? Uh, this is the alternative leaderboard of the Unaroyal Alcan 5000 rally. In first place is Gene Rain Dearson and Mike Van Restroom driving a submarine. In second, <laughs> Ken Playtag, Glenn Highwayman, and Steve Moneybags in an Audi. Third is Man of Steel and Break McGuffaw in the check machine. In fourth is Phil them up again, Danny Bad Loser, Danny and Denny Setting Son in Jap Scrap. In fifth place is such a culture vulture, Lord Nelson and Bob Shopkeeper in the Swedish Jet. In sixth, Paul Hatmaker, Ron Beer uh, in Dodge the Flying Tiger. In seventh, Beck the Hammerman Atkinson and Big Bad John in the Indian Truck. In eighth, Jerry Banter and Tom Noslow in the Poser Turbo. In ninth, Bob and Rabbit and Jerry Pissoff in the Bunny. <laughs> in tenth, Nan Nancy Woodswood and Kathy Old's daughter, Lord Jap Scrap, with 199 points. <clears throat> and here comes the copy on this. <laughs> well, it was a long time ago, but really on. Oh, it's. <laughs> But really, only 10 days that the Unaroyal Alcan 5000 rally left the delights of the Greenwood Hotel in Bellevue. Oh, the Greenwood Hotel. <laughs> and last year's, winner, John, last year's winner, John Buffoon, went into an early lead, which lasted approximately the same length of time as the bodywork of the Audi wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and then Richard Renamouth Hughes moved behind the wheel. <laughs> moment on, things went slid rapidly downhill for Vermont's crew, with Tom Hacksaw's office gradually getting destroyed around him, <laughs> until we move into the present situation where Stuff and Buffum is packing the fiddle. <laughs> the California cheesemaker, Ken Mayfly, then <laughs> moved into the lead, but for discretion being the better part of valor on the road out of Toquin, Audi pilot Ken gave best to a truck and incurred a couple of handfuls of penalty points, which let Gene and the submarine into the lead. The man from... Don't drink that stuff. <laughs> the man from Motor City, aided and abetted by Mike Van Toilet, now holds a precarious advantage, which could, of course, be wiped out when the drop-your-worst score ruling is applied. Derek, man of steel, and his sidekick, Break Muffin, have done very well. <laughs> Lying third in the rally and all the time in the bars. <laughs> and that's despite closing just about every bar between Seattle and Prince Rupert. As for fill him up again Blackstone, the barmaid in the El Dorado Hotel in Dawson City wanted to know was he a prospector who had struck gold or a rally driver <laughs> from looking at the, at the rocks on his hands. <laughs> As for such a school teacher in fourth place, it was very much a question of the hills are alive with the sound of music as the blackbird boogied along. <laughs> Paul and Ron, the flying tigers, they've been doing a fine job as well, apart from holding sixth place that they have been dubbed the hospitality officers of the rally and are in a shocking condition. <laughs> Beck, the hammerman, Atkinson, and Big Bad John are apparently being called to Hollywood, megabucks being offered for their in-car footage of the rally. 
Steven Spielberg has been on the telex. Jerry Heckel and Tom in the Porsche are apparently seeking digit transplants. They've been so busy trying to keep the German Exotica machine in pristine shape, rubbing their fingers to the bone. <laughs> Bob in Rabbit Daniels decided yesterday on the Cassiar Highway that he was fed up looking through the windscreen, so flicked the little golf around and did a bit of high speed reversing past a logging truck, while Jerry, Mr. Cool Piss Off, just kept right on puffing his pipe. <laughs> the girls in the Honda renamed Team Tits. <laughs> Says that right here. <laughs> and we just ad lib? No, no, it says sure. that right here. We wanted to call them the Bush Pilots. <laughs> we lost Hackler. I've been up to all sorts of things. Both in the car and out of it, but we're not allowed to talk about any of their activities. While Beth, Pat, and Carolyn have stayed the course in their passion wagon Mercury, including a highway gyration, but they are still going with and with two male drivers behind them, and one of them's driving a Porsche. Male drivers, that is. Duke, Saunders, and Sam. What did one coffin say to the other coffin? <laughs> is that you, coffin? <laughs> trailing its backside in the gravel and has had to have a nappy, you call it diaper, applied. <laughs> and what can we say about Rocky II, the fastest mobile chicane in North America? <laughs> when poor Gordon sets his course, that's it. Rob Hamburger, Dale Foley, and Gary Ice Cream just strap themselves in and hang on. They were even heard to remark as they slid off the road, we have total confidence in you, Rick. <laughs> Susie Faust's son has just taken over driving the Queen of the North. There's a strong rumor going about that the onboard computer has been reprogrammed to take the ship to the Emerald Isle. Not only has Nate organized the computer in the rear brakeless GTI, but he's doing it here too. Lying in 12th position are the brothers Soren Weary. After scorching their black RX-6 and a wee bit all the way to Inuvik in record time, Road of Road Hall and Jim Flicker have been stumped by the mathematics of TSDing introduced a secret weapon in the shape of C.J. Badley, who just happened to have an abacus in her luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't even need any batteries. <laughs> she said it was an abacus. <laughs> looking for them as well. Cesar Fiorio isn't. Mr. and Mrs. in the Toyota, Dave and Pat Luda, Lewis, that is, are just having a ball, even without their tape deck, which broke early on in the rally and which would have caused us, of course, to quit. <laughs> and as for the other members of the Alaska Rally team, team David Fitzsum and Greg the Great, they make up in quietness what the rest do in loudness. <laughs> They've been trying to make up something for three days. <laughs> We've lost the little Luxembourg beetle of Al Schmidt and, of course, Fernie pensioned off in the great metropolis of Toke, but we've still got Val. Finally, for now, what about the control cars? Well, Peyton Place has nothing on these guys. Last year... <laughs> last year it was Terry and Colleen and Jerry and Margaret and Mary and Steve. This year it's Colleen and Dwayne, Jerry and Yvette and Terry and Margaret. <laughs> who does Margaret actually live with? <laughs> and who answers Jerry's phone? <laughs> Milt hasn't changed. He's still quoting Robert Service very badly. <laughs> and he's got his sons, Bill and David, with him. Wayne and Gordon, the antenna men, we've nothing on them yet. <laughs> and all we have on Rally Master Jerry Hines and Yvette is that they uh, are doing Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton impressions over the CB. Oh, yes. <coughs> it's Mary Fearsome and Rob this year. It's also complicated that we don't really understand it all. We're just simple Irish folk. And they, <laughs> Thanks very much for having us on your wonderful rally, and thanks also to the purser and Karen for the use of their office with BC Ferries. Please buy Karen a new typewriter. <laughs>
And I'm afraid if someone tells Richard Hughes that he can't go to the Canadian club in Levi's, you know what the result is. Alaska Rally Team t-shirt and tie a belt around it over her Levi's and when they say, sorry ma'am, Levi's aren't allowed, just drop them. <laughs> <laughs> I got my next song.